Brothers and sisters, I welcome you here to St. George as we pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We offer our prayers this morning that we may be made blessed and that we may receive the promises of Christ. Lord Jesus, you give us the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, in you we find our way in truth and life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that forever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The tent, which was called the meeting tent, Moses used to pitch at some distance away outside the camp. Anyone who wished to consult the Lord would go to this meeting tent outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, the people would all rise and stand at the entrance of their own tents, watching Moses as he entered the tent. As Moses entered the tent, the column of cloud would come down and stand at its entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. On seeing the column of cloud stand at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and worship at the entrance of their own tents. The Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one man speaks to another. Moses would then return to the camp, but his young assistant Joshua, son of Nun, would not move out of the tent. Moses stood there with the Lord and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity, continuing his kindness for a thousand generations and forgiving wickedness and crime and sin, yet not declaring the guilty guiltless but punishing children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for their father's wickedness. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. So Moses stayed there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights, without eating any food or drinking any water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of all the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. 
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus dismissed the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them in is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a little bit of a continuation from the book of Exodus this morning. You may remember yesterday, Moses had the tablets of the Ten Commandments. He came down the mountain, he hears all this noise going on, and he sees the golden calf. And so he goes to Aaron, the man who he entrusted the people to while he was uh, with the Lord. He says, what's going on here? And he said, you've been away for a while. So I told them to throw all the gold that they have into the fire. And this calf just came out of the fire. It reminded me of a story when I was about eight years old. My little sister was about six and a half. And uh, my mother said, I need to go next door for about a half hour. You two just stay home, stay inside, and behave. And we each kissed our mother sweetly on the cheek. She went out the door, and then we tore upstairs. We ran up. We're jumping up and down on the bed. We got a pill our pillows going. One of them burst, and so all the stuffing is flying all over. But of course, there's another pillow, so we whack each other with that one until that one breaks. And then my mother comes into the room and says, what happened? And I looked at my sister. She looked at me. I looked at my mom. And I said, robbers. <laughs> well, it's kind of like Aaron yesterday, right? The calf just kind of came out. We don't know how this happened. It just kind of came out. Well, then we pick it up today, and here's poor Moses. He's back with the Lord, he's with the tent, and he's got to rewrite the Ten Commandments. God chiseled them the first time, but he says, this time, Moses, you're going to do it. You're going to do the work. You rewrite the Ten Commandments. Well, unfortunately, sometimes we will try to rewrite the Ten Commandments. And we're a little more sophisticated than I was as an eight-year-old or Aaron was when he said the, the calf just came out. We try to, we don't necessarily lie with such a lack of finesse, but we do rationalize pretty well. We find our way around the Ten Commandments in so many different ways. We, we find excuses for ourselves. And that's where the gospel comes in when, you know, the weeds and the wheat are separated. And God is going to have to kind of sift through things. And I think that when we picture this, it's important that we recognize what is God's attitude in this? I think that for some people, he's just ready to pitch us into hell. He's just waiting to catch us. And I don't think that's the case at all. God is always hoping to catch us doing good. And God is always hurting when we choose to turn away from him. I think that's how a loving father feels when his children let them down. That's how my mother felt when they looked at us saying, really, robbers? We have our lies, we have our excuses, we have our rationalizations, but all those things won't help us to be counted among the blessed. 
I, I, I sometimes feel a little uncomfortable talking about, you know, being worthy of the promises of Christ because we really can't be worthy of heaven. There just isn't any way we can become worthy or make ourselves worthy. We're simply blessed. It's by God's grace that we have the possibility of entering into heaven. It's by God's grace then that we are moved to do the right thing and to face the Lord with truth and with love and with our whole heart. So let's stand and ask that the Lord will bless us, that we can be a people who follow his word. That the Lord will guide us with his Holy Spirit, that we may live in his truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those times that we find ourselves rationalizing or lying primarily to ourselves, that we may choose the truth of God's word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all the bishops, and all those who are charged with leadership in God's people, that they may be guided by the Spirit in all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with faith, who are struggling to lead good lives, that they may be strengthened by God's goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are most vulnerable in our society, for the unborn, for the sick, for the elderly, for the forgotten. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are sick at homes or in hospitals. I invite you to especially pray for Deacon Joe Panic as he's preparing for a significant surgery tomorrow, that God will bless him in the hands of the doctors and the nurses and all who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Ann Breedeman, and for our Mass intentions today, for Michael J. Gibbons and Mark Sienkiewicz, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all mercy and peace, hear the prayers of your people. Bless us, Lord, so that we may always hold true to your word that brings us everlasting life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual food and drink, and blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. Amen. O Lord, accept the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy,
Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and glorious resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, lays our Bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, St. George, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer a sign of Christ's love and peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the folks at home, I invite you to take a moment now and make an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. 
O Lord, we have consumed this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, this Mass has ended. We go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. It's going to be another hot one. Check in on your elderly neighbors or people who might need. Just make sure that they're doing okay.